tools you can use, virtual collab collaboration apps for personal and professional productivity. Our presenters today are Marty Lawler, Vic Parati, and Neil Hare. Marty Lawler is currently Senior Lecturer of Marketing and Management and Director of the Online Executive MBA Program. He also teaches strategic thinking in the Online Executive MBA Program. Vic Parati is Associate Professor and Department Head of Management Information Systems and teaches statistical analysis for managers in the Online Executive MBA Program. Vic also currently leads the Digital Business Initiative at RIT. Neil Hare is Associate Professor of Marketing and teaches Marketing Strategy in the Online Executive MBA Program. Neil also serves as the Interim Executive Director of RIT's Innovative Learning Institute. Today our presenters will share their knowledge of a variety of online tools that you can use to enhance your social and business collaborations. You will learn the various capabilities of the collaboration tools to better determine when to use each one, and you'll have the opportunity to ask the presenters for advice and guidance regarding specific needs you have for online collaboration. There's a lot to cover in this hour, so let's get started. Marty? Thanks, Sally, uh, and welcome, everybody. Uh, thanks for taking time on your lunch hour to uh, join us for our presentation today. Um, I'm going to start the presentation off and uh, uh, basically frame the, the, the panel's discussion um, sort of on why we chose uh, these particular tools. Um, today we're going to take you through three different applications. Uh, one is called Join Me, uh, second is Google Hangouts, third one is Adobe Connect. Um, many of you may be already familiar with these tools and using some of these tools, and I guess uh, one of the takeaways right at the start is that uh, one isn't better than another. Um, the reason that we chose these tools is that these three applications uh, provide a kind of a, a range of features and cost for people uh, across a bunch of different applications. Um, uh, probably uh, we could argue about whether Join Me or Google has fewer or more features, but the general sequence of these things is uh, Join Me is free, Google is free, Adobe Connect uh, uh, has a cost. Join Me and Google, uh, certainly Join Me in the free version has uh, fewer features. Um, Adobe Connect is probably the richest of the three apps in terms of its capabilities, and Neil, Neil will tell you more about that uh, a little bit later. I'm going to uh, take you through Join Me, tell you a little bit about how I use it. I'll show you some uh, screen captures. Um, uh, demonstrating how to log in and what you can do with this, um, and then I'll pass the um, uh, discussion to uh, Vic, who will take you through Google Hangouts, and Neil, who will talk through Adobe Connect. So um, what is Join Me? Um, basically, uh, there are two versions of Join Me. There's a free version, uh, kind of a stripped-down version, as well as a pro version, which uh, uh, you can pay for. But essentially, this is a meeting app um, and a really terrific screen sharing app uh, with some uh, conference capability as well. And I'll, I'll talk about a few of the features of this uh, as we go forward. Um, <clears throat> why do I like this app and how do I use the app? Um, I have a frequent need to uh, engage and interact with students in my classes outside of the classroom environment as well as with uh, clients from our uh, 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 capstone uh, projects that students do for particular companies. And frequently I have a need to show people how to do something. If it's with a student, I may be bringing up a Word document or a PowerPoint slide or simply just demonstrating something on, on my machine. And I'd like to have either a, a small team of people uh, log into a Join Me session where I control the app and I take people through the various aspects of uh, the document uh, and so forth. Frequently, uh, students will call me up after I grade a particular uh, uh, case or document, and I can advance them through the document and take them through it. Everybody's looking at the same screen. So multiple team members log in and see the same thing. Uh, the next couple of slides I'm going to show you are sort of the simplicity of the, uh, uh, of the application. So how do you log into this? You go to joinme.com. Uh, it's a browser-based app uh, application, very simple to use. Uh, you go to joinme.com and you're presented with a couple of different options. If you are hosting the meeting, uh, you're going to want to 
select start meeting. If you simply want to join the meeting, you will enter a code that the, uh, the meeting uh, host will send to you. To actually host a meeting, you have to download a particular app to your desktop. Um, I keep mine down in the dock on my Mac. It's a Join Me app. I click on that. It brings me up to the screen, and then I simply just start the meeting. At this point, um, I can share my screen or I can join somebody else's meeting. I click on share. And uh, what I want you to notice now is you've got a, a number of options uh, up at the top of the screen. Now we've got a live session going on here. And within uh, that particular dashboard, so to speak, I can do a number of things. Um, I can uh, initiate uh, an audio call and uh, if you buy the pro version of this package, you have unlimited uh, audio. You also have access to international conference numbers. The free version actually allows up to 10 people to engage in an audio conference using voice over IP um, uh, functionality. Um, right next to that, there's a chat, uh, small little chat uh, option. I can chat with everybody or with individual people. Um, that middle button there is a broadcast button, and in the free version, you can share your screen. In the pro version, you can share specific windows, so you can limit the, uh, the applications to specific windows. Um, you've got some additional options, uh, the, the more options uh, at the end there. You can give control of the screen over to somebody else in the free version, right? So I'd like to give uh, Vic uh, mouse control so he can control what's on my screen, I can do that. In the professional version, um, uh, I can actually swap presenter mode, so I can make other people presenters with all of the privileges uh, that a presenter has. So there's quite a few capabilities in this. Again, I really sort of focus on the simplicity of the app. If you need to share your screen, if you need to uh, basically put a few people on a phone call, uh, it's very easily done uh, with this app. If you're joining the meeting, um, you would click on the, on the Join Me part of this screen. Um, you will have received the code. Uh, the app will automatically email a code out, or you can get on an audio conference and just give it to people. They go out to Join Me, the browser, they, they punch in this nine-digit code, and basically uh, you're off to the races. So to sum up uh, the app, very easy to use uh, meeting app, mostly used for screen share, uh, simple audio conferencing, it's browser-based, couldn't be easier, it's free, and if you do need these additional features, um, uh, the professional version is available for your use. Thanks very much. I think I'm going to pass this to Vic. And now for something completely different. Uh, I see we have a question from the audience. Maybe, Marty, you want to take that? Uh, it's a question about whether JoinMe has uh, different servers for pro and free. Do you know the answer? Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that. Um, we can try to look that up. I don't know what happens behind the scenes. I do know that this is a really scalable app. Um, there are millions of people at this point that are uh, using this app according to the information on their website. So um, that's something we could probably uh, uh, find out for you and follow up with. Okay. If somebody captures that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Neil Marty, please jump in as I'm going. Uh, glad to have it be very collaborative. Uh, greetings to all 52 attendees. I'm excited to see so many people and, uh, of course, recognize many of the names. So, hello, friends. Uh, I have the pleasure to talk about Google Hangouts, which is actually a tool that I use fairly frequently. Uh, and as Marty said, I think it's, it's very simple. I don't know if it's simpler than Join Me, but it's pretty darn easy to use. And... Uh, as you'll see, I use it in a number of different situations. So I have a regular research collaboration meetings with uh, people across campus and uh, in other states, and we use Google Hangouts to have sort of a video interaction. Uh, it works very well for that purpose. I have had a big screen with Google Hangouts running at the advisory group meetings so that people that cannot attend uh, the Management Information Systems Advisory Group meetings can be virtually present, both uh, listening as well as interacting with the people in the room. Uh, probably my favorite uh, purpose for Google Hangouts is to bring guest speakers into the classroom. Heck, some of the people uh, attending may well be my future guest speakers. Uh, I will 
explain in a minute why I like it so much for that purpose. And finally, I use it to talk to my brother in California and things like that. I can see the kids. Uh, as an overview, Google Hangouts is a very functional video chat tool with a very few collaboration tools sort of attached. It doesn't have much else. It is completely minimalist, which is both its strength and its weakness, I think. It uh, very much depends on what you're trying, trying to accomplish with Google Hangouts. I would guess, without knowing that many of you in the audience have used Google Hangouts in the past. So, what I see is the pros for Google Hangouts. Number one, it is, boy, pretty darn easy to use. Uh, pretty much turn it on and you see your friends and they're talking to you and you're talking back. You don't have to hand the microphone icon around. Whoever is talking at the moment kind of has their audio patched through. It's very, very easy to use. Uh, it's mobile friendly, it works on all kinds of devices, and it was intended to work on all kinds of devices. So it doesn't really matter if you're using your iPhone or your Android tablet or your a laptop or your desktop computer. People still have those. Uh, it works very well. It does have a couple features which I think allow it to be considered in the context of these other tools. Uh, it will allow you to record your session. So if you're having a meeting, if you're having a collaboration event, you can record it and share it for later. And in addition, you can share your screen, meaning, thanks, Neil. You're welcome <laughs> for blacking that out. Uh, <laughs> when you share your screen, uh, everyone can see uh, whatever it is that you're doing. So if you have a document that you want to show everybody, uh, that's an easy feature to use as well. And the last one is actually one of my favorite characteristics of Google Hangouts and goes to the question that we had earlier. I like the way it degrades when the wireless <coughs> signal slows down a little bit. Uh, when I've used other tools before, uh, such as Skype, I see it sort of fall apart completely. Uh, either the call gets disconnected or it gets garbled, you can't understand what's going on. And I just like the way the Google tool kind of hangs in there. Uh, even if it's not perfect, you can generally carry the conversation very easily through this tool. So uh, it's one of the things that I think Google did very well with this application. Could, could I jump in there? Yeah. I was thinking more um, to uh, Ravish Patel um, about that question. And I think you're referring to the audio of uh, Join Me. <clears throat> so I think uh, you need to note that the audio in the free version is voice over IP audio. The audio in the pro version uses a circuit switch uh, telephone network. So they actually give you a phone number and people uh, call in on their phone. So in that sense, it's a much more scalable uh, audio uh, in the professional version. So. I noticed that we're up to 55 attendees since I've started talking, guys. Do you think that's because of me or no? So, yeah, what's to come, I think, actually. All right, all right. Uh, let's go on to the next slide. Uh, ease of use is one of the things I've mentioned. Uh, you saw the Join Me process for getting connected. This is a, a screen capture from the right side of my Google Plus page. Basically, you see my arrow. If Neil had his highlighter going, he could highlight the Start a Video Hangout box, but you know what? It's not very hard. Press that button and away you go. Select the people that you'd like to connect with. If uh, in the past you've had a, a Google Hangout with a, an individual or a group of people, you'll see it there in the history like I have with my brother and my students and uh, my research collaborators, and you can just restart an earlier hangout and the same people are sort of automatically called. Uh, in terms of ease of use, I think it is absolutely great. Were you circling RIT online there, Neil? I thought you lost me. Too. Okay, right. Yeah. Uh, Google Hangouts was built to be mobile friendly. Uh, and I think that distinguishes it from a lot of these tools that were sort of developed specifically in the browser and then may have been extended to uh, different mobile devices. It works quite well on your iPhone when you're walking around, and it actually may change, I think, the way people use Google Hangouts. It makes sense, perhaps, to use it when you're on the go, uh, when you're away from the computer, away from the office, uh, and it's a nice tool for that purpose. So something to consider when you're evaluating tools. Uh, so here they are. The real collaboration features, the most important collaboration features, I think, for Google Hangout are the ability to share screens and the ability to record the event. Uh, the way Google talks about recording uh, Hangouts is called Hangouts on Air, and that's the, the lower piece down there 
uh, on my slide. It says share your recording after you're on air. It will automatically uh, record an event and automatically upload it to YouTube so that other people can see it after the fact. And you can control the permissions on YouTube, but uh, Google Hangouts has this ability built into it. You can also schedule Hangouts ahead of time, which is true probably in both of the other tools. So you can let people know that on this day, at this time, we're going to have a Hangout and people can jump in, uh, somewhat akin to what we've done today with this uh, WebEx technology. Uh, it was so easy, I grabbed the four dummies page on how to share your screen in Google Hangout. I don't know how big that appears on your page, but basically while you're in your Hangout, you press the button that sh says share screen, <laughs> and away you go. Uh, <laughs> you begin to choose what it is that you're going to share. Even, even I could do that. Exactly. Do we even need me to present this tool? Huh? I guess we'll find out. They had to give the easiest one to the techie. We are going to shift Google Hangouts to the left on the scheme and put Join Me in the middle because That's I think right. this is simpler. I've convinced you. And with fewer people. All right, right. Even an MIS professor can use it. So uh, the cons of this tool, as I see it today, are it is, it is a far cry from a fully-fledged collaboration system. It's not going to have uh, any of the markup tools that Neil is fond of. It's not going to have advanced screen sharing. Uh, students can't virtually raise their hands in this space. Uh, however, it's good at what it does. It's good at video chat, including multiple parties. Uh, even a significant number of parties can have a high quality, I would say, video chat. And that may be enough for a lot of purposes. If you want to, you can record what you're doing or share screens. All in all, it's a tool that I use fairly frequently. Uh, you might find you like it. I'm glad to answer questions about Google Hangouts or other tools as we go forward. Uh, I think it is time Possible. to pass the ball to Professor Hare. Here we go. Thank you, Vic. I appreciate it. Well, hi, everybody. Good, uh, good morning, afternoon, or evening, depending on where you're uh, logging in from. It's really nice to see that the uh, vast majority of the attendees today have sat a class with me at some stage of their career, as far back as 1999, I believe, yep. with uh, Mr. Phillips. So it's nice to see you, you too, Ravish. So I, uh, I have great pleasure in talking to you about the, uh, the Rolls-Royce, or actually think about my audience, I should probably use um, an American term, the Cadillac, if you like, of uh, uh, sort of collaborative tools that we use almost extensively at uh, RIT across all of our sort of online programs. And one of the reasons why I love it so much is that it just seems to work. And it gives me great control over the, uh, the, the classroom experience or the, the collaborative experience that I'm trying to create for uh, a client or for a, a group of students. And here you can see I'm in the auspicious grounds of my basement uh, in, uh, in uh, uh, Brighton, New York, upstate New York and Rochester. And I can deliver the same sort of experience that I will do for students in a face-to-face -face setting. So I'm going to go I'm going to one stage further. I'm actually going to lay, lay my... my uh, Reputation on the line and say that I can actually create a far superior experience using these sorts of tools uh, in the absence of face-to-face -face contact than I could do in a classroom setting. And I'm really proud of uh, the association that we have with this for that reason. And I know that this works for a lot of my students as well because at the end of the day when it comes to graduation, for instance, I do a lot of work with the online EMBA uh, group at, uh, at RIT, people that I probably meet once or twice in their career with me. And it's, it's wonderful at the point of graduation to receive a bear hug from a, a military type or an ex-military guy that, that has never actually physically met me before, just runs up to me and treats me like an old friend. And I like to think that that has an awful lot to do with uh, some of these tools and the way in which we can interact with one another sort of moving forward. And Adobe Connect works across platform. I mean, I've been caught short with delays on uh, Planes and I've actually logged in using my souped-up Android device because I'm not a huge fan of Apple products, as some of you will already know. But uh, it allows anybody to log in from wherever they are. And the quality, I think, is um, far superior to some of the other products that we see on, on the market in that it works, in that um, it degrades, like Vic was saying with the, the, the last example of Google Hangouts, it degrades depending on the sort of connection that you have. Uh, and it's mobile-friendly, which I really like as well. So you can disable certain features like uh, my uh, awful video shot of uh, my, my talking head and focus in on the slides that, uh, that I'm looking at. There are a lot of other things that you can do as well in terms of promoting people. So you can have guests come in and promote them to pre uh, present a, state, uh, a status if you want to. Uh, likewise, you can kick people out if you, uh, if you want to do that as well. So it gives you a certain degree of control that I think a lot of the other products tend uh, not to have. So as someone that's trying to give a presentation to say 
30 or 40 participants, it's very easy to control the experience that, uh, that they have. Another feature that I really like about Adobe Connect is the use of these pods, and you can see them on this screen here, in the sense that you can bring in certain pods to illustrate the points that you're trying to make. So, for instance, here is a, an office hours live session I did with the, the online uh, EMBA recently, talking about how you can provide uh, ideal presentation experiences for your audiences and things that you might want to do, and of course, sort of some of the things that you might not want to do in terms of your uh, facial uh, expressions and stuff like that. It allows me to organize the experience by bringing up the agendas, talking about assignments, um, providing presentation guidelines, those sorts of things, and uh, giving someone a dynamic experience where it's not just a static web, uh, web share of uh, one particular screen, but you can create this immersive dynamic experience that I really don't feel you can, you can achieve the, the, same, the same sort of degree of quality when it comes to doing this in a physical classroom space unless you've got access to say three or four separate um, presentation vehicles or uh, three or four different types of uh, projector. But well, just some of the reasons why I like this so much. But not only that, if we get to the next slide, you'll see that um, it can be incredibly immersive for the people that you're working with in, in a smaller team setting. So here you can see a group of, uh, of, of, of uh, students coming in that are presenting to me as a fictitious client. But they actually use this on a day-by-day -day basis as well to collaborate with one another. The irony being, I find that a lot of our graduate students on campus tend to use this tool even in a physical setting where they're all sat around the table. So why would they do that other than the fact that they're all geeks obviously associated closely with our IT and the technology they're in? Well, they do it because it's easy to record notes. Uh, if a, a team member can't actually make the, uh, the meeting, then you can record this. It can be played back at your leisure. It's a great way of archiving information as well about uh, the sort of things that you might be covering. So it's great in that sense that it's helping to build team rapport uh, in a face-to-face in a -face setting and also in, uh, in, a, in an online setting as well. Hey, Neil, can I jump in? Please do. So uh, I, I wanted to simply point out, here you see an example of Adobe Connect, which is a tool that I'm, I'm very much a fan of, doing two things at once. You, you see the uh, video feeds of the participants and you see the PowerPoint slides. Uh, being shared. In Google Hangouts, which I was just describing, you wouldn't see the situation. Uh, a person's face would be replaced by whatever screen they're sharing at that moment. So mm -hmm. it, just, it just goes to show a different kind of characteristic for this mm -hmm. tool versus the Google Hangouts tool. And you can really build in multiple layers with Adobe Connect, which I like as well. So there's nothing worse than looking at uh, a set of PowerPoint slides sat in the back of the classroom for two or three hours. So you lose the world to live and wonder why you're paying the sorts of tuition that you are. So instead you can layer that experience by perhaps jumping into slides, pulling back, pulling up to the faces of the entire group so that you get a sense of sort of team dynamics. Uh, you can interchange between reports on say uh, PDF. You can also uh, engage in uh, screen share. So screen share of applications. So if you've actually got a, a game that you want to show a snippet thereof or a particular video, you can do that. And likewise, you can also uh, share uh, any of Microsoft's products, uh, your email inbox if you really wanted to. Um, all those sorts of features are, uh, are available and, and, and ready to use with, with Connect too. I suppose so that's kind of a, a sense of all of the benefits. There are, of course, drawbacks, and the cons are, I think, the same with all of these platforms, and that is that when you're presenting your million-dollar pitch, it's obviously going to go wrong at the most inopportune time. And that's just way, you know, the way in which technology tends to work. But there are some sort of fallback mechanisms that you can deploy with these sorts of collaboration tools as well in terms of uh, using multiple tools at the same time. So, for instance, a lot of our uh, exec students tend to have a fallback position of Skype using screen share if the Adobe Connect platform goes down. And if all else fails, you can always patch in your teammates as well using speakerphone. Uh, on your cell phone. So there are lots of ways in which the users of these tools have found workarounds to ensure their overall experience is, uh, is effective. Jens, anything you want to add about Adobe Connect? Yeah, um, this is Marty. I, you know, as I'm looking at you talk about the richness of the app, um, it's probably important for people to note that there's a cost to this kind of richness, and I don't mean in the financial cost of it, there's a learning curve for people to come up. So uh, for people that are taking these courses and they're taking course after course and they're using these apps, uh, they come up that learning curve and they learn how to use the utility in all of this. So 
Again, each of these apps provides functionality that's appropriate to a particular uh, situation. If you need something very simple, um, this may be too much tool uh, for you. Um, another point that uh, I'd like to make as I was listening to this is we're talking about three apps, but there is a proliferation of these kinds of apps. So even around RIT, we've got people using BlueJeans now. Uh, we've got a number of our students and faculty using uh, VC. Um, and there's a sort of convergence of free apps that are adding ever more uh, functionality. Um, and apps like Adobe Connect, the Cadillac, uh, full-featured, rich apps that are trying to stay a step ahead and still be simple enough to use. So um, there's real pluses and minuses in this in this uh, uh, range of tools. At, at some point, I would be interested to hear from the uh, participants if they're using some of these apps uh, and whether they're using them in a work environment or whether they're using them in a social environment. Um, I don't think we have any polls that we're running on the, in the WebEx today, but um, if people want to use the Q&A field to sort of weigh in, that would be something. And there are a couple of questions there. One from Ravish. How are you, Ravish? Good to see you, my friend. Um, yeah, since they stopped using that free version, that has kind of put, put a kibosh on a, a number of individuals using that uh, that kind of a service. Um, I, yeah, I'm going to deploy a secret weapon, uh, which is uh, a, good, a good friend and colleague of mine, um, put him on the spot. He's also a, an attendee, Jeremiah. Um, if you have any thoughts on the financial cost of the use of um, Adobe Connect for organisations, if you could give us a range, that would be that would be great. If you're there and you're uh, you're still uh, participating, I've not looked at the attendee list just yet. Jeremiah is one of the. Um, he's also he's a, 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 an alum and a current student on one of our master's programs. So uh, he's also a colleague of mine and uh, is uh, pretty much in charge of. Uh, Making sure that Adobe Connect works well on our campus, so we'll see if uh, we'll see if there are any um, any thoughts that he might have. Well, there you go, Jeremiah. You're there. Wonderful. Okay, you could. So Adobe would, would would provide a quote. What kind of range are we looking at? And obviously, we're we're talking about an education institution here, so we get uh, discounts as a result of our use. Any ideas, Jeremiah, on that? Okay. Well, you've answered. You, you, you've at least attempted to answer the, the question, Jeremiah. So you've certainly not failed in that regard. Good job, my friend. Good job. I'm thinking, Ravish and others, if you're excited to use the Adobe Connect tool, we'd be glad for you to come back to campus and take online courses. Another <laughs> class with Neil or Vic and, right. and Marty, yeah. absolutely. Uh, RIT has already paid idea. the bill for our Adobe Connect license, and uh, you can use it as much as you'd like. Very good idea. Yeah. Uh, join me a moment, too. Another question has just come through on join me. For Mac users, yeah, I, I'm a I'm a Mac user myself. Um, uh, I don't run it. In, in fact, uh, uh, I use Join Me on a regular basis with mixed mode users. We've got Mac and uh, Windows users. Um, we don't normally see too many problems. I don't know if that's a scalable problem or. Um, uh, and Thomas, are you using the uh, uh, the Pro version, uh, or are you using the uh, the free version on that? That may have they may have something to do with it. A free version. Um, well, as uh, one of my uncles used to say, uh, after he fixed our watches uh, and they broke down two days later, he said, "You you you, uh, uh, you got it for free and you want it to work too." So uh, <laughs> yeah, good point. Um, uh, WebEx and Live meeting at Xerox, yeah. And of course, we're using WebEx to, to deliver this. And I, I think WebEx is relatively new at RIT just this year. People have been using it, or have they been using it a couple of years? Natalie says yes. She's the yeah. brand of the operation, yeah. 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 And there are others that we've used as well. I mean, Blue Jeans is another yeah, another tool that we've been, we've been using. There are many. many. I had a I had a question if uh, other people don't, and that's a question. Uh, Vic, Vic talked about the sort of uh, degradation that happens based on number of people and conditions uh, on the call, and um, I'm wondering if we want to say anything about uh, bandwidth demands of these apps. Uh, I don't use Google Hangouts. I, I I have used it, but I don't use it on a regular basis. But I've heard anecdotally that. Um, video seems to work 
they're much more efficient on the video uh, than some other apps are. I've read that VC is very efficient in the algorithm that they use. So uh, maybe you guys can weigh in on that. I've, I've, had, I've had great success on a 4G connection with Adobe Connect, as I say, being in an airport and being able to still give a, give a, give a lecture, answer questions, engage the, the, the community. It's, it's, I've, I've had great success. I, I've delivered Adobe Connect sessions over Wi-Fi out of a hotel room from Shanghai, uh, Istanbul, um, generally uh, without many problems. So, um, and I think uh, Jeremiah, who is on the call, has mentioned that uh, perhaps one of the limitations, and that could be our implementation, is that uh, all of the servers for Adobe Connect, at least at our IT, reside at our IT where something like Skype will have distributed servers around the globe, which may enhance the uh, performance from a bandwidth point of view. If, if anybody wants to jump in on that, they, they're welcome to it. I have an a interesting question from Cassie, and she's asking how do these collaboration tools enhance the overhaul, overall experience in the classroom? And is it inferior to or better than the face-to-face -face interaction? Great question, Cassie. I think that's a really good question. Yeah. Uh, and it's somewhat controversial, I think. I, I, think me, I think I heard Neil put a stake in the ground and say he can deliver a better experience through these tools uh, in the right situation mm -hmm. than uh, in person. And I think uh, there's a case to be made for that. Certainly, it extends your capabilities uh, to work with a large number of individuals, to have student-to-student -student interactions, to uh, bring in different kinds of multimedia. Uh, that is certainly the case. Mm -hmm. uh, given the chance to uh, show a video screen, a, a live webcam of someone, you capture a lot of the interpersonal dynamics that a professor would bring to the classroom anyway. So in many ways, I think, uh, you can deliver a lot of the same, if not better, experience using these virtual tools that you could use in the classroom. Because if you think about the way most people learn these days, I mean, think about millennials mm -hmm. and, and the, the guys coming through now, they, they, they have these things surgically attached to their hands. So yeah. you might as well deploy those tools to full advantage. And I think um, having people turn off their technology is not enhancing their, their learning experience of the way in which they elect to learn these days. It's very different from where we were back in the late 1990s when I first got, got out here, because we had have, we have Real Presenter Plus, and that was pretty much all we used for putting together canned PowerPoint presentations, and then we'd be using text-based discussion boards. But it was nowhere near as dynamic as, as this, or, or potentially as viral. And I know, Vic, as well, you've had, you've had great success with uh, Digent, which is a, uh, an online learning community where you've managed to successfully engage the, the wider entrepreneurial community in North America and beyond that. Yep. You're not going to get that in a traditional classroom. No. Uh, one of the things that I think about is using these public tools brings new opportunities to the classroom. Using a, a public tool means that people that you might not expect to participate could actually participate. Uh, in the example that Neil mentioned, uh, we created a social network, Digent, and it's open to everybody. So we have a thousand different people that might well interact in a classroom discussion. Uh, many of us are using uh, Twitter as part of the classroom experience, and that too brings in many more people to a classroom discussion. So uh, for the same reason that Neil mentioned, the fact that many, many of us are carrying around these smartphones, it begins to make sense to have something which is sort of always available and connected. Uh, there's questions from the audience. Let's see, Elizabeth, do all of these apps connect live or do they do they that allow information to be available to the team at their leisure? Uh -huh. yeah. Synchronous versus asynchronous question. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think they all do both, right? Yeah, I think all of the apps <clears throat> allow recording. So, um, and I think that's what the question is about. Does it allow for asynchronous um, access to content that was in the app? If you record, if you record the session. Um, because the sessions are all live at the time they're being given, they're real time. Um, all three apps allow recording. I didn't mention that, that the, the professional version of Join Me allows recording as well, but you have to pay for that. So I guess all of these provide availability. Um, Richard, above, above Elizabeth's question, Richard makes a point that at GE they're using a number of these different apps. Cisco Telepresence is oh, 
probably, uh, I mean, that's a very expensive. Kill fees on it. Uh, it's beautiful, uh, yeah. Video production. Uh, we, once, we once actually took a capstone team uh, to visit uh, Cisco in Munich, uh, Germany, and uh, they took us into what looked like a NASA control room. They had people calling in from uh, other screens. Um, and I, I think the point, again, is that there are these really established industrial strength mm -hmm. uh, video uh, sharing uh, uh, conference-type apps um, for really critical uh, uh, application needs. And the apps that we're talking about didn't exist, some of them, five years ago, yeah. right? So this incredible proliferation and explosion of apps, is, is they're starting to chase these apps and the quality is getting better and better uh, on these. My experience with um, that Cisco platform has been phenomenal. I, I connected in, in England, and it was it was just, um, the quality is phenomenal. We have those at RIT. We have uh, we have several units that you can use, but they're not really scalable. In the sense, you can't be using those in a classroom yeah. or in a small business. It's just not going to work. The cost, that that speaks to, to Richard's point about costs. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Uh, Richard's last question there actually puts me in mind of something I wanted to say anyway. It seems today that you, you have a number of alternatives. One would be to buy a big system that does it all, and, and you might be able to achieve something with real security there, and that might make sense. Uh, but for many of us, it might make sense to cobble together a collection of tools, both public and private, to serve our needs. So as I look at Google Hangouts as a collaboration platform, I think, well, it does video conferencing very well. Yes, I can uh, you know, record or share my screen, but it's, it's only that and nothing more. But when you begin to complement it with uh, Google Docs, Google Drive as they call it now, or other tools, you begin to imagine an environment where lots of free tools are used together to accomplish the whole. Uh, you can control security on some. You can control security on others. Uh, you can't do it on others. So I, I imagine an environment where we use lots of different tools in the future to, to the best of our needs. Well, I see Jeremiah is um, delivered, as he always does, and there's, so there's, a, there's a, a link for a number of purchase options there. If I can jump on Ravish's um, uh, questionnaire about open courseware and open classes, and I thought you'd have had enough of me by now. Uh, Ravish, but I guess not. You want you want some more, do you? Wait, Ravish, were you asking for a Neil class or no, just a Neil class? <laughs> <laughs> well, of course it's a Neil class. That's great. Um, we are looking at RIT Online. Um, you can see the logo on the site there. We've recently relaunched and rebranded our online efforts, so you can expect a number of things to look forward to uh, in the uh, in the future, Ravish, including uh, open webinars. Uh, modules of courses that will speak to some of the skills and competences that you guys feel as though you need sort of bringing up to date with, um, and also we're launching a number of uh, advanced certificates that are geared much more towards the graduate, executive, professional level uh, student, and of course mo many of you are, uh, are, are now classified as, as part of that group. So certainly you can uh, continue to follow our developments at um, RIT Online and uh, the Innovative Learning Institute of, of which RIT Online is part thereof. So thank you. It allowed me to quickly plug my organization, so I appreciate that. There's also another question, kind of in, in that same vein. Which programs on RIT campus use these tools? Are there other programs using these tools? Yes, there are many. Lots. There, there are many. Uh, well, of course, RIT has offered online education for many years. The default platform today for uh, RIT Online, and then I'll let Neil correct me if I'm wrong, is Adobe Connect. Yeah. So we use that correct. for uh, basically all of our online classes, including our amazing online executive MBA program, which includes all three of your panelists as mm -hmm. instructors. Uh, so this is a program that uh, is getting some national attention, and we're actively participating in today. That's the program that I use uh, Adobe Connect in the most today. We've had, a, uh, we've had a comment from Thomas, uh, and I think I know which Thomas is. <clears throat> um, um, must be Tom Rickner is my guess. Um, uh, Tom had mentioned that uh, he does, he, when he went through the program, he used Adobe Connect in the classroom, but he also mentioned that they use VC for their team meetings. So this is, again, to this point that you use a multitude of these tools for different, uh, uh, for different requirements. Um, the students 
tend to use uh, Google Hangouts was used quite a bit. VC was used quite a bit. Um, I don't know if Join Me was used so much by the by the uh, students themselves. Hi, Thomas. Nice. Uh, one of the things that I think about when I work with student teams, and of course a lot of the education at RIT is team-based, project-based education, is that these tools do not intend to do project management in any way. There, there's nothing built into them to assign roles, to help people stay coordinated, to have a schedule, et cetera, but there are many, many publicly available tools to do exactly that. So one of the things that you might think about is what, what sort of project management tool would you complement this with? I like, for example, Basecamp or Trello. Uh, there are many other popular ones to, to go along with that. Usability is really critical here as well. I think it's worth worth mentioning. Frank, the first time people see an Adobe Connect room, it, 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 the temptation to run screaming for the hills is, um, is is very much present. It does take quite a long time to get used to manipulating these sorts of um, tools and technologies. Do we, do we have any advice on jumping in and how to how to learn these tools or navigate them? It's certainly a key, it's a key business skill these days. It certainly is a, a skill that people are going to need in order to be effective in their jobs. What's your advice, Jen? Well, for Adobe, I mean, uh, unless you've got an organization that's willing to host it and pay for it, you probably won't have much opportunity unless you are a student someplace uh, where they're using this. Um, these simple tools like Join Me and Google Hangouts, is, I, I would say just just jump in and use them. I mean, everybody has an opportunity, uh, uh, probably has a, a, an opportunity to use a tool like that. They're simply so simple, these web-based tools. You don't need to buy anything. You don't need to, uh, if you don't want to host a meeting, you don't need to even download anything. You just go to a website and you start using this thing. So, so play with it. Play with it. And yeah. It's a process of experimentation. Uh, I've had you know, people virtually sit in on my classes, and that, that might be a way to uh, experiment with the technology. Those are generally people interested in a program, and they want to see what it's about, but it, it is a way that uh, you can get connected to some of the RIT technology that we've actually paid for. We have another question from Richard. Does Google Pro offer the ability to set up a voice facilitation operator for larger meetings with Island? I don't know the answer to that, but I'm going to guess the answer is no. Mm -hmm. I would guess no. Yeah. Um, and Christy asks, um, what's your favorite tool? Do you have a favorite? In this space? Do you think, Christy? What do you think Christy would be asking? <laughs> I, I think they're so completely different. When I teach my uh, statistics course in the online executive program, I would want nothing but Adobe Connect. Yeah. I can't imagine using a different tool. I can show uh, you know, statistics programs and my big talking head and PowerPoint slides and we can have live chats, et cetera. But if I'm doing one of these research collaboration meetings, that's, that's way overkill. So oh, yeah, you're, I, not, I, you're not going to use it to have a beer with your brother, are you? Right, exactly that. With your brother, maybe, but with my brother, no. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> what do you think? Adobe connects me all the way, unless I'm talking to my dad and then it's Skype. Yeah. So, then it's, it's, you keep it simple, otherwise yeah. things go horribly wrong quickly. Yeah. We used, uh, um, uh, recently we had an uh, advisory board meeting, and we used BlueJeans for the first time. And uh, uh, we spent a little bit of time sort of getting smart on this. We had a half a dozen, six or seven people log in via video. Uh, we put it on a big screen in a conference room. It worked surprisingly well with very little uh, effort on our part to sort of get up on this, right? So this was a very uh, uh, short uh, uh, investment of time um, to jump into this. Um, uh, so that app, and I think we would probably use that app again. Um, mm -hmm. The app uh, also uh, allowed us to record the meeting. So um, for me, for me, the question becomes: How does the video work? What kind of latency is involved in this? Um, uh, that the, the stuttering that we get sometimes, uh, these things are uh, subject to time of day use, uh, uh, bandwidth demands, uh, just like any other app. Um, so I'm I'm really looking for scalability at the time uh, uh, and uh, dependability. Speaking of the video, I don't know if you guys have got any um, choice moments that you want to share about some sort of humorous activities that have taken place in these sessions because. 
Because it's a live environment, I don't know if you've found it, but I've certainly found that if anything can happen, it usually does. And, one, and it, it speaks to the skill set of being able to manage these sorts of collaborative environments. My favourite, though, was when uh, a youngster who was uh, wanting his mum, who was an executive MBA student, wanting his mum's attention, just opened the door, came straight up to the camera, asked politely if he could get a drink, and just sort of walked away again. Yeah. It was kind of amusing. I've had cats walk across the screen oh, in yeah. front of certain individuals, that sort of thing. That's always fun. Cinema verite, right there in the classroom. Very much like the real world there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess the, the funniest thing I could say is that, that uh, some of my students said, oh, you're the guy that teaches from the bed. Well, <laughs> the, the uh, reason was that the home I office was under that. construction. <laughs> I know. I don't want to hear there that. There goes alumni <laughs> relations. So, uh, no, they could see in the background, although you know, I tried to disguise it with the webcam that I was sitting in the bed as I uh, lectured to the class. It is an interesting environment where we carry around these uh, cameras with us wherever we go, on yeah, our laptops, yeah. on our cell phones, etc. And we are more and more present in those awkward moments with one another uh, using these tools or others. Yeah, I've had, to have a, I've had to have a conversation with a student once about not drinking beer whilst I was giving a lecture. <laughs> that was kind of a pain. Yeah. But he uh, rightly pointed out it was no duels, which I believe doesn't have any alcohol in it. But still, it looks as though he was sat in the back having a beer. It was kind of bizarre in that regard. You're saying you're not familiar with non-alcoholic beers? Uh, no, I'm saying we're still a dry campus, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see. Sherry has offered us some videography advice. <laughs> Best angle for video is put the com computer camera up high. Thank you. Yeah, good That's idea. Very helpful. You must be a pro. Up to no ceiling isn't attractive. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point. All right. Quite right. Actually, Vic and Neil uh, actually apply makeup before they get on Adobe Connect. We're, we're, we're wearing it right now. Actually, it's a shame that we can't turn our web cameras on to delight you with the, uh, yeah. the purple lipstick. Yeah. It helps with the shine. It does. Well, it looks like you know that. Oh, maybe we have one more question. Uh, it's no, not, it's it's not, it's not a question. It's not a question. Thank you, Lois. <laughs> Agreed. A real question. There we go. Yeah, it's, do you want to read it? Uh, sure. Uh, Elizabeth asks, is there an app that can be used to reach out to the unknown general public relaying information about a specific group of student activities? Parentheses. I work with a middle school band program and I'm always looking for ways to connect better with the parents or reach the outside world with music arts advocacy. And in the side, marketing rules the world. Well, on the last point, I agree entirely. Well, Absolutely, Elizabeth. Um, it's, uh, profound statement and it just happens to be true. You know, the Saunders College has an excellent marketing program as another aside. They certainly do. And some really excellent professors therein. Elizabeth, what about Twitter? If I want to tell people about uh, something that's coming up, boy, I would surely run to my browser window and yeah. type 140 characters about it. Twitter is a great tool for that purpose. And it's a great way for seeding other, cha other platforms and, and channels as well, like Facebook or like LinkedIn or YouTube channels, those sorts of things. We have, we've, I think we've had quite a lot of success with Twitter as a, as a group of individuals, that is. Uh, Elizabeth, if you're not a Twitter user, uh, the only thing you'd really have to get right is to decide on a hashtag so that people can continue the conversation about whatever event it is that you're talking about. So if there's a concert for the middle, middle school band, you want to have, you know, middle school concert, hashtag middle school concert, like they talk about in the commercials. Well, if that's all the questions we have, we'll start wrapping um, today's session up. I want to obviously thank our presenters, Vic, Marty, and Neil. You guys were fantastic and offered a lot of great um, information with collaboration tools. Um, if you have additional questions, they can be emailed to ritalum at rit.edu or tweeted to at rit underscore alumni with the hashtag me RIT webinars, and we will um, direct your questions to our outstanding presenter.